All right, and Corbin Max, he's back in our studio again. Welcome back for a Wednesday Creature Feature. This is week number billion of, I, exactly, of Africa. Exactly. There, you've had so many adventures over there, I can't even remember. I've lost count now yes. how many we've had. <laughs> yeah, we've had a lot, but this is different because we're not seeing any animals today. We're actually seeing the people, the native people from Africa. It's fantastic. The moss I have been living in Africa for hundreds of years, and I got to actually like sit there and, and film in their village. It's fantastic. Take a look. Cool. Okay, so we just left Il Kiliani, our camp. I'm kind of feeling like Celine Dion right now with my hair because the <laughs> wind is bad because I'm riding on top in a safari vehicle for my first time. We're headed to a Maasai village. We're going to be learning about their traditions, their culture. I'm excited. The coolest thing, though, is right behind me is the Maasai Mara. Okay, I'm right here with the Maasai, here at the Maasai Mara. It's incredible. I'm here at their village, and the Maasai have been here for hundreds and hundreds of years, and they've coexisted with the African wildlife. Unfortunately, though, due to the increased population here in Africa, they're finding a struggle trying to save their culture. Now, the cattle, that is what the Maasai, that is their livelihood, and so they have these cattle that, that they protect, and they're protecting these cattle for many, many years, and what they're striving and striving to do is trying to educate people to try to coexist and try to save their culture in an ever-changing world. The Maasai live in these incredible houses. They're actually made of sticks and cow dung. They're kneaded together and they provide great shelters for them. You can see they last anywhere from seven to eight years. Okay, so I'm about to go joy dance with the Maasai. I'm excited. I don't want to get speared. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay, so we just left the Maasai village. Incredible. Uh, I bought some little cool little trinkets here and there. And uh, But what you know what was actually really amazing was actually learning about their culture, learning how they live, and kind of learning how they're trying to coexist with the ever-growing population. And uh, <laughs> we're headed back to camp. See you tomorrow. So we saw the Corbin Maxi in his not so natural habitat jumping around. There. Exactly, and I can't jump very high apparently. <laughs> <laughs> and speaking of where they live, is that around all the animals? Or it is around all the animals. They actually live in bomas, and bomas they actually it's it's just a bunch of um, it's a bunch of thorn bushes. They actually put them all around their camp to protect them from you know from lion and hyena. But there's a lot of human and animal conflict in the Maasai Mara. They live amongst these animals, and that's when uh, they're really there's a lot of issues going on with the increased population, and so you. You'll see more of that, you know, in weeks to come with that human and animal conflict. And they do speak English, so you got to actually chat with them, yes, right? Yes, yeah. And, and what did you find out about that jumping that you are doing? Speaking of, you yeah. took part. What is that all about? Yeah, okay, so apparently I couldn't jump, but they can jump really, really high. And they practice this, um, the men practice this when they're very, very young. And it's actually to see their cattle over long distances. They <laughs> they, they jump up because those cattle, like the the cattle, that is their, uh, that's that, that's their livelihood. And so um, they, they do that to jump up so they can see the cattle over long distances. I guess that so. makes sense. A very simple Simple solution, but it makes sense. Yeah, yeah, they could jump pretty high, but yeah, it was really, really cool. So, wow, right. yeah. very cool story. All right.